It's 8 o'clock. Good morning. This is Northern Light for Wednesday, July 12th. I'm Monica Sandreski. And I'm Todd Moe. Some communities in the central Adirondacks got hit hard by flooding Monday night. Really, at this point, if you are expecting to need to get from point A to point B going through Long Lake, you shouldn't even try, even if the road seems to be open. <laughs> like You're not going to get past that intersection for a little bit. We'll hear from residents in the aftermath of the weekend storms coming up. Also, recent changes to federal rules for commercial driver's licenses have made them harder to get, and that's hit some public works departments hard. I mean, if you're you know, 20 years old, are you going to go pay six, $7,000 to go to a truck driving school and get your training? No, because um, most people don't have that money, right? But in St. Lawrence County, Messina may have found a solution. And the popular Ride for the River biking event is almost sold out. It's an annual cycling fundraiser this Sunday for the Osable River Association. I think that's the great thing about the Adirondacks is it's really embraced cycling as a culture and is looking for ways to get people out on bikes to explore the wonderful landscape that we have. We'll talk with Doug Haney with Bike Adirondacks coming up. All of that and more is just ahead on Northern Light. Stick with us. Broadcast of Northern Light here on North Country Public Radio is supported by Mountain Orthotic and Prosthetic Services, a full-service practice committed to providing care for patients of all ages with offices in Lake Placid, Plattsburgh, and Malone. Details and referrals at mountainonp.com. And Blue Seed Studios, a multidisciplinary art center featuring classes for adults and youth, concerts, art exhibits, and more, bluseedstudios.org. This is Northern Light. I'm Monica Sandreski. And I'm Todd Moe. President Joe Biden approved a federal disaster declaration for the entire state of Vermont in the wake of heavy rain Sunday and Monday. Yesterday, Vermont Governor Phil Scott described the flooding as historic and catastrophic. He said flood levels may continue to rise. Uh, Barry and Montpelier were hit particularly hard. Some communities outside Burlington had to be evacuated after the Winooski River jumped its banks late the, Monday. The central Adirondacks got hit hard by heavy rain and flooding, too. Hamilton and Essex counties both declared states of emergency. Some homes and businesses flooded. A small dam in Long Lake for Jennings Pond was breached. And major roads between Newcomb, Long Lake, and Blue Mountain Lake were washed away. The bridge into Long Lake from Route 30 has been closed since early Tuesday. Our Emily Russell spoke with folks in Long Lake about the storm and its aftermath. The heavy rain began on Monday night. Sam Keller was at his home in Long Lake. He says he didn't take the storm very seriously at first, but the rain just wouldn't let up. It was a steady tropical-like rain, heavy. They kept looking at the radar, and it was just hovering over us. Keller is a landscaper from Long Lake. His house is on higher elevation, so wasn't at real risk for flooding, but plenty of places in Long Lake are. Keller kept monitoring the rain from Monday night into early Tuesday. It went through the night. I was up every hour on the hour. I said, we're going to expect some damage. <laughs> we were dispatched around midnight, between midnight and 1230 for a flooded basement. That's Paula O'Brien Pereno. She's a firefighter in Long Lake and says that call was the first of many. While preparing to respond to that, we were dispatched to another, a second basement flooding. Uh, so we had to divide our troops, <laughs> divide and conquer. While they pumped out the second basement, they got a third call. The main road into Long Lake, Route 30, was flooding. And it was flooding right in front of O'Brien Perino's home and business. She manages the Long Lake Diner and Owl's Head Pub. So divide and conquer again. Her husband monitored the flooding around their property while O'Brien Perino stayed focused on the larger flood response. A lot of folks in Long Lake were up all night helping neighbors, feeding emergency responders, checking in on friends and family. O'Brien Pereno says Long Lake also got a lot of help on Tuesday from nearby communities and state agencies. As a small, very small rural community, we sure have some pretty great people here that can come together 
just knowing who to call, that's when it counts when you know your community and everybody just jumps in. There's a lot of work ahead for Long Lake. A lot of folks' homes were flooded. Some people had to be evacuated. The nearby Adirondack communities of Newcomb and Blue Mountain Lake were also hit really hard by flooding on Monday night. Lisa Johnson manages Hamilton County's Department of Public Works. She says some of the worst damage was on Route 28 to Newcomb. So a long portion of it was closed to traffic as of Tuesday night. Photos show the road fully torn apart by the force of the flood. I mean, it's beautiful pavement. It had recently been done. It looks great. And then it's like ribbon candy broken kind of. It's just, you know, this long thing that's just kind of been scrunched up in in waves. Johnson says that kind of damage takes time to repair. She's urging folks just to avoid that area of the central Adirondacks entirely. That will give crews time and space to repair the roads around Newcomb, Blue Mountain Lake, and Long Lake. Really, at this point... If you are expecting to need to get from point A to point B going through Long Lake, you shouldn't even try, even if the road seems to be open. (laughs) Like You're not going to get past that intersection for a little bit. Patience is key right now. This is usually the busiest time of year for Adirondack tourist towns like Long Lake. So that patience can be hard to come by, both for visitors and for business owners like Paula O'Brien Pereno. She's the firefighter that owns the pub and diner. Still, O'Brien Pereno says she's hopeful. I'm trying not to get a little nervous about that, but I have faith that we'll be, we'll be all right. County and state road crews will continue to assess the damage and make repairs in the coming days and weeks. Emily Russell, North Country Public Radio. Governor Kathy Hochul says hate crimes are on the rise in New York and the number of anti-Semitic acts in New York was the highest in the nation last year. Speaking at the Museum of Jewish Heritage in Manhattan yesterday, the governor said she's taking steps designed to eradicate hate in New York. She signed legislation that mandates any college receiving state aid must implement plans to investigate hate crimes, inform students about how those investigations are conducted, and post an incident of hate or bias on campus on their website. Hate is like a seed. If it's planted, it can grow and grow and grow. And we're not talking about flowers, we're talking about weeds. Weeds that can ultimately strangle society. Hochul also announced over $50 million in security grants to go towards places that may be targeted by hate crimes, religious institutions, cultural centers, and nonprofit community-based organizations. I want people to know when you gather there, you're going to be okay. That when you send your kids to a program, a summer camp there, they're going to be okay. Hochul said with these funds, New York's most at-risk organizations will be able to invest in the security measures they need to stay safe. You're listening to Northern Light here on North Country Public Radio. It's eight minutes past eight. Good morning. I'm Todd Moe. And I'm Monica Sandreski. Just ahead, tips for places to take a bike trip this summer. That's in just a few minutes here on Northern Light. Music by Evan Veenstra in Gananoque, Ontario. Check out more of his music anytime on our website. It's part of the Underscore Project. Visit us at ncpr.org slash underscore.
Northern Light is supported by North Country Children's Museum, Potsdam, with hands-on and minds-on programs and exhibits for children 12 and under and their families. Open Wednesday to Sunday, 10 to 5, northcountrychildrensmuseum.org. And St. Lawrence Health, committed to keeping the community healthy and safe by providing vaccines for patients to strengthen their defenses, stlawrencehealthsystem.org. The ongoing worker shortage has been particularly hard on North Country Public Works departments. We're talking plow drivers, truck drivers, and highway construction crews. And that's partly because of recently changed federal regulations that make commercial truck, uh, commercial driver's licenses, CDLs, more difficult to obtain. In St. Lawrence County, Messina may have found a solution. Amy Fireisel reports. The ongoing shortage of commercial driver's license, or CDL drivers, really took hold during the coronavirus pandemic. Marty Miller, the superintendent of public works for the village of Messina, says the department used to get 20 to 30 applicants for an open job. Now two to three is the norm. It was difficult to hire people that had a CDL, and it was very difficult for me to hire ones that didn't have a CDL because they would have had to go to a training school. That training school is a new federal requirement from last February when the government changed CDL license requirements. In the past, you got a permit, studied independently, and then did a road test. Now you have to take what's called entry-level driver training. This is a course with a certified instructor. There are very few of these courses in the North Country. There is one at SUNY Canton. It takes eight weeks and costs $7,000. When Marty Miller from Messina heard about the change, his first thought was this. I mean, if you're you know, 20 years old, are you going to go pay six, $7,000 to go to a truck driving school and get your training? No, because um, most people don't have that money, right? But here's the thing. You need a CDL license in public works. It's required to drive a dump truck, a garbage truck, a plow. So Miller thought of a workaround. He decided to get certified as a trainer so that he could offer in-house free CDL license training to employees. It's a big deal because it opens the door for a lot of different people to put in when they do have a job opening. His idea is that the employee can work and make money while doing their training. I can hire somebody and all I ask them to do is to go get their permit. And that's like $35, I think it is. Then I will train you in-house Along at the same time, you're still a benefit to the village of Messina because I can still work you doing other jobs that doesn't include driving. Miller's hope that this will open the door to younger applicants is already coming to bear fruit in his most recent hire, a young man who just graduated high school. He did a job shadow with Miller through BOCES in the spring. Miller hired him for the summer and then offered him a full-time job. Because he's an outstanding worker, 19 years old asked him to get his permit, and then we'll train him to get his CDL. It's a little, it's actually a lot of work on my part, but I'm happy to do it um, to make this program work. So, Miller will start training his new employee this month. Amy Feierisel, North Country Public Radio. A candidate for St. Lawrence County Sheriff is dropping out of the race. Under Sheriff Sean O'Brien said in a press release Friday that after great consideration and in consultation with my family, he is suspending his campaign. O'Brien lost the Republican primary to Sheriff's Office Detec- Detective Rick Engel last month, but he still would have appeared on the Conservative Party line in the general election in November. O'Brien said he was declining the party's endorsement. O'Brien's decision clears the way for Engel to become St. Lawrence County's next sheriff. Engel told the Watertown Daily Times he'll continue campaigning through November. You may have seen the boat wash stations where you can rinse off your boat to prevent spreading invasive species to local bodies of water. Well, your feet can also spread invasive species. That's why a not-for-profit is raising money to build boot brushing stations at trailheads across the Adirondacks. NCPR intern Maya Mackey has more. The Osable River winds through the Adirondack Mountains, past Lake Placid, and empties into Lake Champlain. Carrie Ann Persian is an ecologist for the Osable River Association, which works to research and preserve wildlife in the Adirondacks. She says that her group is installing boot cleaning stations at trailheads and along the water. 
boot brush stations not only help you get the dried mud off your boots, but they remove seed and plant fragments from the boots before folks hit the trail. Already, there are boot brush stations at the Flume Trailhead in Wilmington and the Connery Pond Trailhead in North Elba, closer to Lake Placid. Pershing says the goal isn't just to stop the spread of invasive species. It's also to raise awareness about them. It's a one more chance for um, visitors and residents to interact with and, and see some educational signage to stop and think a little bit about what might be coming in on their hiking boots and gear. Pershing says the project has support from the DEC, and the Adirondack 46ers group helped to get it off the ground. She says each boot brush station costs about $500 to build. They're starting a crowdfunding campaign to make more. The next station the group sets up will be at the Garden Trailhead in Keene. Maya Mackey, North Country Public Radio. You're listening to Northern Light here on North Country Public Radio. I'm Todd Moe. And I'm Monica Sandreski. In just a minute, we'll talk with Doug Haney with Bike Adirondacks about cycling opportunities in the region this summer. Then stick around after the show for a bird note coming up at 842. But first, Todd has a look at the weather for us. There is more rain heading into our region starting tomorrow and probably continuing through most of the weekend, according to the National Weather Service. But today, a mix of sun and clouds, highs in the upper 70s, low 80s, light winds out of the south-southwest. Uh, Partly cloudy tonight, lows in the 60s overnight, and then tomorrow, about a 60% chance of showers and thunderstorms, highs near 80 on Thursday, and then about a 90% chance of more rain on Friday, showers and thunderstorms possible, highs, again, upper 70s, low 80s, light winds out of the south. Through the weekend, about a 40% chance of scattered showers Saturday and Sunday with highs in the low 80s. So again, today, partly cloudy skies. Light winds out of the south, highs, upper 70s, low 80s. It's summer, and there is plenty to do outdoors. Hike, paddle, fish, camp, and hop on a bicycle. There's no shortage of places to cycle or events to attend in the Adirondacks throughout the summer months. That's according to Doug Haney, an avid cyclist and founder of Bike Adirondacks, which promotes road, trail, and mountain biking in the region. I caught up with Doug recently to talk about some of the biking events this summer and biking routes to check out. I think that's the great thing about the Adirondacks is it's 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 really embraced cycling as a culture and is looking for ways to to get people out on bikes to explore uh, the wonderful landscape that we have. Uh, Queensbury is is a great example with the the Gurney Lane Mountain Bike Park, which has been developed over the past oh I don't even know how many years, but into just a fabulous facility for people to stop at and ride. I think they've got over 13 miles of, of mountain biking there. Uh, and it's just a quick and easy way to hop off the Northway. If you're heading, heading North from the capital district or even further South up into the Adirondacks for the weekend, you should definitely take a moment and stop at uh, the Gurney Lane mountain bike park. They've got a, a bike shop on site uh, and there's shower facilities there. So it's uh, it's pretty much all set up for it. And uh, they actually have a great mountain bike festival that they're planning uh, for the middle of August this year too. So where is that? Give, give give us kind of a snapshot of how to find it. Really, you just hop off the the exit there uh, at uh, Queensbury, uh, and it's uh, right next to the state offices uh, that are that are right there. Um, it's pretty easy to find. Um, you can go on on our website too, bikeadirondacks dot com, and click the find a ride tab and select mountain biking and you can search for it that way too and that'll get you there pretty easily you've got a number of things happening around the adirondacks and and the north country in terms of uh biking events and cycling events and uh i want to give you a chance to maybe talk about uh, a couple of them that kind of are tops i guess in uh, on your list this summer yeah well the first one i'd like to mention is, is ride for the river which which happens on july 16th it's been a fundraising event for the Osable River Association for, for 12 years and just does a fabulous job of raising money to support their conservation efforts uh, to 
make sure that the uh, Sable River corridor and watershed just stays as beautiful and, and as wonderful as we see it is as right now. That that ride is almost sold out, so if people are interested in doing it, they should definitely hop on board with that. We've got two distances of 30 and 43 miles, and then it finishes up with a, a great uh, finish line barbecue and live music by the Midnight Stargazers at uh, the Wilmington Town Beach. So you can hop on your bike, go for a spin, come on back, grab a bite to eat, go for a swim, and uh, celebrate the Alsable River watershed and for with Alsable River Association and us. And that's that's the first one. And then, as you mentioned, Todd, yeah, the weekend at Paul Smith is coming. Paul Smith College is coming up uh, uh, the first weekend in August, and that's a three day event. It's uh, it's one of our our most popular events that we do. And this year, it's uh, it's really exciting. We were able to partner with uh, Explore uh, Adirondack Frontier and bring in a national recording artist uh, with, with uh, the Honey Dew Drops. We're going to play a live show on Friday, August 4th, right there on the waterfront on the Great Lawn at Paul Smith College. Uh, and the cool thing about that concert is it's totally free and open to all. So whether you're a participant in the Weekender road cycling event or you're just in town and you want to go catch some good music, you can hang out with a lot of people who love bikes and listen to some great music right there on the waterfront at Paul Smith College. Doug, I want to give you a chance to do a shout out to um, people who are kind of behind the scenes with a lot of these events because, they're, of course, they're people who actually cycle and are on their bicycles for these events. But you've got these roadies, you've got volunteers, you've got people behind the scenes that you know, support vehicles and and that sort of thing. So take a moment and just kind of do a shout out to the the behind the scenes folks who might not be on bicycles, but are certainly there helping out. Yeah, absolutely. I think the first folks that I need to give the shout out to is the conservation organizations and nonprofits that we partner with for all of these events. The great thing about Bike Adirondacks is every single one of the cycling events that we do is a fundraiser of some sort for somebody who is invested in not only the communities that they, they live and work in, but the natural landscape that we all enjoy so much. So those organizations like our Civil River Association or with the Weekender, it's the Paul Smith College Sustainability Program, um, they all do good. And, and that makes me feel good as a, as a tour operator, an event operator. Um, but then they also, those folks help us out with volunteering for the events and helping us run along with, as you mentioned, um, my group of roadies who are honestly, I think, the best in the business. And you're right, we have every one of our events is fully supported. That means we've got... Um, vehicles out on the road who are there to kind of help you out. If your, your bike breaks down, we'll pull over and help you change a tire uh, or to give you a ride back to the start if you, if you got a little tired. Um, we also have riding guides. Um, we are marshals, I call them, out on the, out on the road, but they're really the roadies. You'll see them in Bike Adirondacks jerseys. They're, they're there to give you encouragement, to give you a smile, to, to talk to you a little bit about what you're seeing as you ride your bike, but really just to make sure that you're having a good time. Our goal is for every single one of our Bike Adirondacks events – for people to show up, and the only job they have is to ride their bike and smile. We take care of everything else. When you're not busy dealing with, you know, the organizing and the logistics of these events, when you and your family get a chance to do some biking together, where do you like to go? Where is a, where is a favorite route for you and your family? Because I know you have some children, and you think about, you know, as a family, where you can go and those sorts of things. Where do you where do you folks like to go? Yeah, I, we live in Saranac Lake, and that's a, a great community for riding a bicycle. So we ride around town a lot. Um, when we get into the woods, my, my kids really enjoy Fowler's Crossing, uh, which is a nice network on the, the Bark Eater Trails Alliance network. Um, and then in the, in the fall and early spring, we, we go out to Fish Creek uh, Park and ride uh, the loops around the campground there. That's a lot of fun. But I will tell you, Todd, I, I personally, my family, my friends, everybody I know uh, could not be more excited for the Adirondack Rail Trail, which is, is being uh, constructed right now. And we should be able to ride the section between Lake Placid and Saranac Lake by this fall. Um, and that in itself is going to be transformative for not only for recreation, but I think for transportation and, and just for quality of life for people who live and work in these areas to be able to, to move vehicle free on a, on a pedestrian and uh, motor free way that the rail trail will provide is, is going to be just an amazing opportunity. My, my kids talk about it daily. They cannot wait for the rail trail to, to open up and I can't either. 
Doug Haney is founder of Bike Adirondacks based in Saranac Lake. Their website and the newsletter they put out are loaded with information for biking in the Adirondacks. And the, the website address is bikeadirondacks.com. Jazz pianist Larry Ham, and uh, you're invited to a free concert tonight in Keene Valley. Jazz pianist Larry Ham, saxophonist Woody Witt, a jazz quartet will give a free concert behind the Holt House. Marcy Field starting at 6.30. It's part of the Music from the Back Porch series, co-sponsored by the town of Keene and Keene Valley Library. Tonight, free concert Marcy Field, Keene Valley, starting at 6.30. Let's listen to a little more of Larry Ham. Don't Mess With Nobody. Don't mess with nobody but me, Larry Ham, on the piano from his album Just Me, Just You. And you can catch a jazz quartet led by Larry Ham and saxophonist Woody Witt. Free concert behind the Hold House in Marcy Field, Keene Valley, tonight starting at 6.30. So many events going on throughout the region. Just want to remind you about the exhibit currently on display at the Whiting Studio Gallery. They present a barn full of art. It's an annual event that's going on in Argyle, New York, outside of Glens Falls. This features the works of Susan Beadle, Chris Gregson Moss, and Ken Wilson's Ken Wilson. The exhibit is still on display through the 16th, and you can find out more at whitingartwork.com. Uh, just a reminder, Book and Blanket Players production of Treasure Island is uh, this weekend. The performances have been sold out, but there's still a handful of seats available for the Friday dress rehearsal in the Keene Valley Country Club. If you'd like more information, if you want to go to that dress rehearsal for Treasure Island, call 518 708 Three six zero six, And if you're unable to attend Friday's dress rehearsal, would still like to see the show. They'll be screening the show at the Keene Valley Library on Sunday. You can call 518-708-3606 for more information about our Treasure Island at, in Keene Valley this weekend. <laughs> 
And the North Country in the summertime is a lush place to be, and artists in Potsdam are celebrating that right now. Check out the exhibit on display at the Potsdam Town Hall. My Beautiful a Garden showcases the work of talented artists, local artists who have drawn inspiration from nature and the joys of gardening. Artists include Amy Douglas, Rebecca Kelly, Catherine Lapointe Vollmer, Allison Debo, Larry Zuckerman, and Lindsay Schenkel. You can check that on, check that out on display now at the Potsdam Town Hall. That's it for the show for the day. Morning Edition continues in just a minute. Then it's the Marketplace Morning Report between 8.51 and 9 o'clock. I'm Monica Sandresky. And I'm Todd Moe. Thanks for listening. Be well.